It is streaming now. Streaming live and direct 20 minutes into the future. I have 0% drop frames. That is a good sign with this fancy new fiber op internet connection. I have a 75, I think it's 30 megabit upstream or 75 megabit upstream, something ridiculous. Yep. 30 yes, megabit. John upgraded his tube. My previous upstream was 1.5 or something horrid. And it did not work very well for Twitch, but this is working gloriously. So let us see in the chat to see if, uh, oh, people are mentioning, yes, uh, my beta feedback. So that is good. Uh, I guess we didn't get an ad this time. I'm grumpy. I am hashtag grumpy. Uh, well, welcome to the Sentinels live stream. Uh, we are actually broadcasting from Canada today. I'm going to send this feedback to the Trello board so the beta testers can see that. Oh, do you have, do you want to do the intro thing? I don't even have it up. <laughs> I don't have your exact intro, like, memorized. I don't have it memorized. I read it off the thing. So, <laughs> let me find it. So, my first, so before I get into that, I just want to apologize. There's, I, Jeremy had shoulder surgery yesterday. So I am on lots of painkillers tonight. He is a biological man. Yes. They can rebuild me. They have the technology. But um, that is why John is broadcasting from Canada because I'm at home on my couch recuperating. Indeed. So, yeah. So we are going to be playing uh, some more Rook City content for you guys tonight. Uh, if you did not hear, you should check out our blog and, be, and you should get less grumpy because we announced that Rook City is coming out uh, a week from today. A week from today! Right. April 14th is the release date, um, obviously pending Apple, but uh, so far we haven't had any reason to think that um, we won't make that date, so uh, we will cross our fingers and get everything uh, straightened out for Steam and Android as well to release on the same time. Indeed. Yep. So. All right. So I will. I, I have loaded it. So welcome to the Handle Labra live stream of Sentinels of the Multiverse. It's Sentinels Live Tuesdays at eight. The goal of these streams is to show you how to play the game and cover strategy to help you win. Uh, we are the developers, so you can be sure to get some insight into the process as well as see stuff before anyone else can. Uh, you need to see some of the last of the new Rook City stuff this evening. We'll be playing against the chairman. Uh, the game, of course, does include a tutorial that covers the basics, but we will always do our best to explain what we're doing, uh, when we do it, and why. Depending on how long it takes us to win or lose, uh, probably lose tonight because I'm a little out of it, uh, we may play more than one full game in a session. Uh, but we do expect our sessions to last an hour, hour and a half, maybe like an hour and 45 minutes. Hour and 47 Hour and 47 minutes, minutes is the target. Sentinels of the Multiverse is currently available for iPad, Android tablets, as well as PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam. And of course, it is available in good old cardboard and ink right there on your tabletop, which is important because this coming Saturday is what, John? International Tabletop Day. International Tabletop Day. Fun yeah, stuff. So, so check your friendly local game store or other gaming venue uh, for events. If you're in Halifax, Nova Scotia, you should come by the boardroom uh, where we're going to have some promo cards that Greater Than Games sent along. Uh, they've been sending them out to all kinds of game stores, so there's going to be all kinds of Sentinels events, uh, Sentinel Tactics, Galactic Strike Force, uh, along with, I'm sure, all the Dice Hate Me games uh, as well. So, cool stuff. So, Indeed. Rook City. Let's get to some Rook City. Let us get to some Rook City. So we will be playing against the chairman this the evening. Chairman. So, who is the chairman? No one really knows who the chairman is until you the flip shadowy, him over. Yes, the shadowy boss of the underworld. That's right. So he starts out on this side uh, immune to damage. So you can't actually touch him. Uh, and he's only going to flip out once... Uh, flip out. He's only going to flip over... <laughs> <laughs> he does kind of flip out. Flip out. out. Uh, once enough underbosses get into the villain trash. Um, and on advanced, it's if there's any underbosses. On regular, it's if there's at least three. Uh, and then on his other side, uh, he's revealed as Chairman Pike. 
Uh, he's still immune to damage from the environment, so you can't rely on the volcano to take him out, or the T-Rex. Uh, and he powers up his thugs. Uh, I played him on the tabletop, and he, on advanced, and he was doing... Uh, thugs were doing five extra damage. It was brutal. So we're not going to play advanced tonight, but that will come at some point. Indeed. Uh, so the other cool thing about the chairman is he has his sort of frontline underboss, the operative, uh, his assassin, and she she's sort of the main sort of character that you're trying to, to beat first because you can't win the game. Um, you can't win the game if she's up, so you have to knock her out. Yep. Um, so yeah, so we'll get to her um, when we get into the game. So we have the chairman, and I'll talk a bit more about sort of how the cards flow, which it's a really, really cool design, I think, as a game designer, like how the, how the cards flow in this uh, villain deck. In a way yes, other... I think yeah, the way that it's all set up and like how they use like the trash and the deck and all that. I think it's yeah. it uses the mechanics of cards in a really interesting way. Yeah, and we're going to be playing in Pike Industrial Complex. Uh, so that is the chemical factory uh, that is at the heart of Rook City, and uh, yeah, so keep out, keep out, heroes. You'll be prosecuted. Um, forward to hearing the music which you guys haven't heard yet so yes okay so well who, who are our heroes gonna be i definitely feel like if, we, if we're playing against the chairman i think that mr fixer should be in the mix because mr fixer is um you know he's he's uh the nemesis he uh is. because he is from rook city and he always sort of believed you know i shouldn't be fighting back you know it's my city but you know, the worst thing that you can do is is fight these people because you know then you're lowering yourself to their level. But then he slowly began to realize that things were not going to get better unless he did. So, so a bit of insider knowledge. Uh, in order to submit this update to Apple, we had to include that it has uh, mild tobacco references. Yes. Thanks to Mr. Fixer. Uh, okay. Do you want Damn regular cigar. Mr. Fixer or do you want dark watch Mr. Fixer? Yeah, I feel like he does more damage, but he he does more damage, but there's a cost. Things. There's a cost. Well, we did Dark Watch Mr. Fixer last week, so let's do regular Mr. Think, Fixer. Yeah, let's we'll do regular Mr. Fixer this All week. All right. Any suggestions from the stream? We got Greatest Legacy as an yes, idea. Yes, of course. I think we can do that. Uh, yeah. This is Legacy's father. Uh, and he is a new variant that's going to be unlockable in the update next week. So let us get him in the game. We have three generations of legacies available now in the game. That's right. There is America's newest legacy, and America's finest legacy, and America's greatest legacy. There they are. Cool. So we need two more heroes. Who's going to go well with this team? Uh... We've had a request for uh, uh, Rook City Wraith, or maybe just regular Wraith, but he said Rook City belongs to the Wraith, so that sure. is certainly an option. Let's take a look at our statistics real quick and see who we've played less sure. than and Let's than any others. Let's bring in some of these lesser used heroes. Yeah, so uh, let's see. We've played Absolute Zero six times, Bunker and GI Bunker three times a piece for a total of six. Fanatic, we've played more than anybody, 10 times. This one wants, to, wants us to play Zealous often. Yeah, uh, Haka six times, uh, seven legacies between regular legacy and young legacy. We'll be doing uh, America's Greatest tonight. Only four times for Ra, uh, only four times for Tempest, uh, five times for Unity, eight times for Visionary, uh, six times between Wraith and Rook City Wraith. Sounds to me like it's Ra and Tempest. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. Let's get the Elemental Wrath going. But not that Elemental Wrath you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think that's a good team. So that's an interesting, yeah, interesting matchup. I want to take Fixer and Ra, and I'll take Legacy and the Fish, not man, not woman, sure. alien thing. Indeed. Excellent. All right. So we're going to start off Mr. Fixer with the Nemesis. All right. Here you go, guys. Yep. It's a treat. Here it is. Fight! All right, so here we see uh, uh, the chairman standing in front of his industrial complex that he built. I've 
kept tabs on you, Slim. This isn't your fight. Go back to your garage. You are the man behind what? I must fight again. Let's put this all to rest. Let's yes, I know that he is. This is like, let's put this all to rest is such such a like soul caliber line. <laughs> yeah, so if I was trying to do one of those sort of like fighting games he kind of like yeah. <laughs> Raw God of Fun. <laughs> Alright, so here is the chairman and the operative. And once again we have our new feature where you can check out your hands before the game starts. Uh, we can also take a look at uh, the operative here. So when she's on this side here, uh, we can't win. Uh, and when whenever a villain card gets destroyed, uh, she's going to hit the hero with the highest for two hit points. So, or for two melee. Uh, and then she puts in an underboss at the end of the villain turn. So underbosses keep coming out. Um, so yeah, so uh, the chairman's actually going to fill, at the start of the game, is going to fill uh, all the thugs. Uh, is that not, why is that not on the text? What oh, is the all question? Th all thug cards are put in the villain trash. Okay, I was, I was yeah, looking for that line. Uh, so the thugs are, there's sort of this interesting mechanic between you have the layers of the organization. You have the chairman and the operative, then the underbosses and the thugs. The underbosses all start in the deck, and the thugs all start in the trash. And yeah. the underbosses come out from the deck and bring thugs from the trash. And you want to get the underbosses in the trash. Uh, so if you can get the thugs out of the trash and back in the deck, then the underbosses can become less powered, but then the underbosses can break out. So the uh, the trash is almost like the jail for these guys. Yeah. Uh, is sort of the the idea. So it's really interesting. Uh, and it's you, you can get really in trouble if you try to manage things in the wrong way, uh, which I have discovered playing against these guys. So yeah, you have to be really careful about what you decide to put back in the deck versus the trash. So Mr. Fixer, you've got dual crowbars. Let's you hit uh, two things. Hoist chain is like a stun bolt, very nice. Uh, tire iron to insta kill, and a toolbox to get more cards. So you've got mm -hmm. all kinds of equipment. Yep. For legacy, so legacy's base power here uh, for this uh, variant uh, is to have a hero regain a hit point and use a power. Uh, so he can actually. Uh, use someone else, have someone else use a power, which is really great. Or if he has another power, he can use that too. Uh, we've got bolster allies to give everyone cards, danger sense to protect against the environment, and fortitude for defense, and next evolution for defense. So it looks like we're starting the defensive legacy. And we've got Ra, he's all about burning things, flaming tornado for more damage, flame spike for more powers and damage, inferno for damage, and wrathful gaze for discarding. No, sometimes it's useful. Uh, Insta-kill a target. And then we've got Tempest, uh, following up the, in the caboose to get more cards, and Elemental Subway for a bit of defense. Oh, I love Lightning Slash, it's gonna be good. And Vicious Cyclone. So one of the interesting things about uh, Tempest in this fight is he has Genebound Shackles, which, go, which increases damage against the, the villain with the highest hit points. But against this, yeah, which could be tricky in, in this, this matchup. Case. It's difficult because the yeah, because the highest hit points they sort of alternate oftentimes. Yeah, and the worst thing that you could do in this situation is get operative down below the chairman while the chairman is still immune. Yeah, and then your gene bound becomes useless for a while. Yeah, and so um, so since we have a nemesis here, uh, I definitely prefer that Mister Fixer tends to try to hit the main villains more than the. the underlings mm -hmm. is sort of the strategy I'm thinking of and hoist chain is really good against the operative because you sort of negate her reaction damage uh, pretty well so but let's get going we're gonna get uh, a card play he actually doesn't put out anything at the start unlike most villains yep Okay. All right so the hoist chain is whenever mr. fixture deals damage to a target reduce all damage by that target by one until the start of your next turn. So I think that um, that's probably what I'm going to want to get out first. Yeah. So uh, someone's going to get hit for four and someone for three. So Legacy will take the big hit and then Rob will take the three. Cool. And here comes an underboss. 
we have the fence. The fence likes to uh, steal our cards by destroying them. Not a bad start. It's w worse to get the informant out first, uh, who plays a card, makes the, the villain play a card whenever the heroes play a card. Yeah. All right, so, <coughs> Fixer, you're up. There's so much yeah, strategy so would... coming in from the chat room, I can't even follow it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hang on, I gotta... As I mentioned already, I am on painkillers for my shoulder. You might hear me grunting if I accidentally try to move myself around using my shoulder because it hurts a lot. <laughs> uh, a lot, a lot. So, anyhow, uh, yeah, so let's get that hoist chain out. Sweet. And uh, I guess we'll strike. We'll hoist up. Yeah, and strike that operative. Because I think we probably have enough damage to get rid of the thief and... Um, Defense. Yeah, between, uh, actually, yeah, uh, Tempest himself can almost totally do it by himself, because he's got Lightning Slash and then his base power. Yep. So. Oh, yes, thank you, guys. Uh, we were pretty proud of that idea. Oh, the April Fool's? <laughs> that was yeah. <laughs> Our April Fool's joke. Yeah, that actually was it was fully a cooperative idea between us and Greater Than Games, because... Um, uh, you know, we knew that they were going to be doing those meta games for small pockets, and we were thinking, what would be a good sort of capper on that? And we all just brainstormed for about ten minutes, and then the idea of like adapting it back to a board game came up, and we were like, oh, that's it. I'm right going to give everyone cards. <laughs> I'm always what a wonderful like idea. Of that. You really are the greatest legacy. He's he's pretty great. He's p great, as some would say. Oh, staff of Ra. Oh, and there's the Thanks, James so really. Jackals. Excellent. All right, yes, so indeed. now I'm going to choose a hero to get a hit point. I'm actually going to waste the hit point and let Mr. Fixer hit the operative again. So now she's going to be doing minus two damage. Does that sound good? Nice. I love it. I know, seriously, Tempest, fix my shoulder up. <laughs> Is he good to hit the healing, operative? Healing downboard, yep, do it. Of course. These are all Mr. Fixer's decisions, even though America's Greatest Legacy has given it to... Legacy doesn't get to decide what Mr. Fixer does. Mr. Fixer can be like, whatever, I'm skipping my power, jerk. You know, if you're in multiplayer or something. Well, I can tell you, Cabin Bear 3, <clears throat> the, there actually is some information on that, which is that as of basically about a week and a half ago, we have officially broken ground on internet multiplayer. Um, there's anything really specific to tell you about it yet, but because at this point, really, it's just beginning to put some of the stuff in the back end in place. But um, but we, we have actually begun working on it. Now that Rook City is submitted and ready to yeah. go, John is pretty much working on nothing but that. Yeah, and we've been working on it for quite a while, uh, sort of at a lower pace. Uh, because, yeah, and the planning stages. Yeah, so lots and... of planning and lots of sort of back end stuff, <clears throat> stuff that you can't really see. So. Uh, but it is still, it's, it's underway and has been for quite a while. Uh, okay, so, raw. Yeah, can you just uh, go big and walk me through each of the cards so I can sure. look at them real quick? So, Blazing Tornado, we can do three fire damage as a power. Uh, Flame Spike is going to be good when you have later more powers to use. Yeah. Uh, Inferno, one target three, uh, other targets get one. Um, the staff, you know that probably pretty well. Yeah. And Wrathful Gaze. What I would hmm. probably suggest... <clears throat> well, I don't know. You can play what you want. but my So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with Tempest. Um, so my plan with Tempest was probably to Lightning Slash the fence. Get him down to one. Um, and then, yeah. And then yeah. my base power does one to everything. So all we need is one damage to the thief, basically to uh, then yeah. he'll be dead. But there, you have lots of options. You could just straight up kill him if you want to get something into play or whatever, so. Yeah, I was gonna say, I kind of want to start getting set up. So why don't we get the Staff of Ra out? Okay. And then I'll do, uh, you full I guess I can. Mm. Yeah, I guess the question is, do we want to wipe the thief? What does the thief do when it, it's, it kills on? Yeah, at the start of the end of the villain turn, it's gonna destroy your hero on their equipment. And then now Ra's base power is going to do what? Two fire damage with the staff or It'll three? It'll do three now. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I could do an, uh, some extra damage to operative, but I really want to make sure that that thief doesn't live to the next one. Yeah, he's going to he's going to steal either the staff or um, yeah, just, chain. So unless you're willing to give yeah. up the staff, 
then you probably want to help kill him. Yeah, since I don't have a summon staff right now, I'd rather not lose it without knowing when to get it back. So let's go ahead and pyre on Thief. Okay. Especially because on this environment, um, you know, there's some yeah. there's some stuff lurking in this environment that could work. I mean, it's against or us. With, I mean, it's possible that and there's the hoist chain helping us out. So we destroyed a villain card. The operative tries to hit us, and she can't. Uh, I mean, this environment has some good things, has some bad things. We, but I don't no. think we can we can we can't rely on a rat to come and kill the thief for us. It just might happen. Right. So. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and lightning slash that fence. So the thing about this underboss is at the end of the villain turn, they always bring out their corresponding uh, thug. Yeah. So he's he's going to bring out another thief from the trash if we don't kill him. Uh, and we've got a helpful thing here telling us there's two two of those thieves in the in the trash. Yeah, Seamus. If we had uh, regular legacy, that would be he would have probably galvanized, and then tempest base power would be two, and then that wouldn't have been an issue with the thief. But in this case, yeah, but we don't. Have, um, I, I yeah, we don't have base legacy, so. All right, so we're yeah, gonna... at some point though, I'm sure Legacy is going to get out um, Inspiring Presence. Hope, yeah, well, hopefully. hopefully we get it. So here we go. Tempest is squalling around. And once again, oh. uh, the operative is going to try to hit Ra and fail because she's strung up like that guy in Die Hard. <laughs> All right. And we have an experimental mutagen, so this is going to power up the rats, but there aren't any right now, so nothing happens. I can hear them, though. I don't know if you guys can hear them. <laughs> All right, so the operative... Yeah, this is great. Minus two damage to that. <laughs> and I'm going to suggest Ra takes this so that there's no nemesis bonus. I concur. Okay. All right, we got the muscle. I don't mind the muscle too much because he does damage at the start of the turn, and these guys you can avoid their damage if you discard. <clears throat> so, and look, would you like to discard one of your wrathful gazes or something else? Yeah, I get rid of the wrathful gaze. <laughs> I never use it. It's cool art, but yeah. All right, so those effects expire. Um, so what are you thinking? All right. What did I draw at the end of my last turn? Uh, you drew uh, Pipe Wrench, uh, which is another tool, so that would replace your Hoist Chain. Yeah. Uh, and you got to charge that from Bolster Allies, I think, or one or the other, uh, to deal one target two melee damage. And you got your Toolbox to help you draw more cards. A charge might not be terrible yeah. because, remember, every time you do damage, that Hoist Chain effect comes in. Yeah. All right. So, do we have enough dam? Do we have enough damage that's gonna be floating on? Because now we've got an eight and a six to get rid of an underboss and a thug. Do we have enough? Well, Leg doing that. Legacy can have anyone use a power, so uh, we sort of can double up on something potentially. Um, Ra, you could you could probably you could Inferno and do a bunch of damage, uh, like four and two, uh, and then. Not anything for Tempest besides his base one to each. Um, yeah, I think let's go ahead and um, wait a turn for charge. I see a lot of people talking about toolbox. Yeah, toolbox would probably help you get a style. Yeah, let's let's try that. Okay, because we still will let you use. I, uh, greatest Legacy can still uh, let him punch twice, right? So, And here we get a Grease Monkey Fist to let you choose a type of damage and increase your damage. And Salvage Yard, I love that card. Uh, let's everyone get their equipment back. Yes. Yeah, that's definitely a, a good later game. Yeah. One. Alright, so would you like right. to strike? Yeah, I would like to strike, and then let's see, who shall I strike? I would suggest the operative. Even if we get punched by the muscle, like having her... I guess, I mean, if you punch him, he does get a minus one. But... Yeah, I, th I think we should... Uh, again, this is where, you know, sort of my play style comes in. Like, I want to get the... the um, I want to get Chairman flipped. 
uh, as fast as possible. That's sort of my goal. I'm always trying to get those underbosses done. Yeah, um, I mean, my goal more... is usually to kill the operative as fast as possible because she keeps putting out underbosses and that stops when she dies. True, true. But yeah, obviously, it's your call. It's not a bad call yeah. to hit the muscle because he, like, if he does survive, he's going to be trying to hit us, and so the hoist chain is useful on him too. So yeah, let's get rid of the muscle. Hit him. Okay. Fuck. And more dual sword, but you got all the tools. Yep. Yeah. All right. So legacy. Um, I think I'm going to go with fortitude on this. Um, though if I am the highest HP, I can actually have Legacy just, like, become invulnerable to all the operatives' melee damage all the time. That's actually not a bad mm -hmm. idea. Um, that guy goes after the lowest. This guy goes after everything. Uh, she goes after the highest. Um, hmm. It's interesting. I think I'm just going to start with a Fortitude and maybe put that other play into in later. Um, and so if we want to take out the Muscle, then I probably want to let Ra hit him for 4 damage. Or 3 damage. So, let's let Ra use a power. And you'd like to use... Pyre. Yep. Pyred up. The muscle. Yep. Yeah, if you hit him again on your turn, then Tempest can take care of him. And take down. Excellent. Burninating. Speaking of April Fools, I, I assume everybody saw the new uh, uh, Homestar Runner. Yes, that was good. Burning. So what is your thought for Ra? Alright, so... Uh, I have two powers, but one of them is like a get rid of it power. But it, compare Blazing Tornado and Inferno again for so me. Blazing Tornado is a power that gets you three damage. Uh, plus and one yeah, because of staff. Four damage. And this lets you deal one target three, plus one, and then up to five other targets, one damage each. Yeah, let's Inferno. Okay. Because that way, so I could do... What are you going to be doing as Tempest? Just the one. Just the one to everybody? Yeah. So if you want to get, right. if you want to be sure to get rid of the muscle, you have to hit him with this. Uh, yeah, so hit him with the three. Or the four. I guess. And then, yeah, and then do uh, operative and... Well, now the operative punches Mr. Fixer because we destroyed a card. That right. Yeah, and then yeah, we'll hit the other guys. Unless you don't want to hit them for some reason. Uh, and then you still get your base power. Yep. So yeah, you could get the enforcers down to one, and then Tempest can take them out. Perfect. Summon staff. All right. So the operative is still the highest. So and. The chairman is going to flip soon. So Gene Van Shackles is actually not the greatest right now. Uh, maybe I'll... Oh, Electrical Storm is also dangerous. Because once the chairman flips, he punches you back every time you hit him. Yeah. Uh, but that's... If I combine that with um, Gene Van Shackles, it's actually going to work really well for Tempest. So I'm going to go with uh, Electrical Storm first, I think. Uh, so that he's going to hit everything all the time, and then Gene Bound Shackles next turn to start cranking that damage up. Nice. I think. Well, I, I, I could. I mean, I could Gene Bound Shackles right now first. That might be better. Then I'm going to do more damage immediately. I'll do that. And so I'm going to end up doing uh, three damage to the operative. And now she's going to punch someone. I guess we'll give it to Legacy because he has minus one. Yeah, he has the fortitude out. And another Gene Bad Shackles. Well, that's fine. 
If only they would stack. Yes, they are limited, unfortunately. Another. Oh man, if a, when a rat comes out. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna be hurting. Be powered up. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, this happens. <clears throat> so all the underbosses are coming out, and <clears throat> yeah, we'll have to deal with them again. Part of why I like to kill the operative. <laughs> yes, yes. And then the contract comes out. Oh, this one is terrible. This in I hate the contract because it increases damage dealt to us by one. Let me get it. Each of them puts out one of their guys. Thief. And then this guy is going to hit us and then put it a hired gun, which also hits us. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure this is going to super matter. Yeah, Prison Break is not a fun card. All right. Discard a card. You can pay to lose another Wrathful Gaze. Yep. Or take four damage. Five damage with the plus one. You probably don't want. All right. What do we want to destroy? Do you have enough cards? Can we destroy Toolbox? Um, yeah, that's fine. Because you've got you've got a style, that's a good yep. one, and you've got stuff. So, all right, you're probably not going to play Toolbox anyways for a while. Yes, they heal because of the fence, and he's going to hit us all, so it doesn't matter. At least there's no Nemesis bonus. All right, Mr. Fixer. All right, so pop open that style and read off right to now. the people. Uh, yes, that would be really helpful. Whenever he deals damage, you may choose the type of the damage and increase his damage dealt by him by one. Yeah, so this is Mr. Fixer's Twist the Ether, basically. Yes. Now, I'm going to suggest that... Oh, I mean, hitting the operative is good because for each of these guys we kill, she's going to hit us. Unless, we, unless I mean, I can do that next evolution legacy thing right now, um, and basically have legacy take the melee damage for zero from uh, from the operative, and then we can kill things sort of without worrying about that. I'm open to that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that is probably not a terrible idea. What are my dual crowbars? Is that that's jack handle, but only for one other. Yeah. So dual crowbars. Uh, once you deal damage to a target, then you take the result of that damage and do another damage to another target. So it actually, if you have, and it increases your damage. So it can like it can amp up on itself, like absolute zeros combos. Right. So like I could take out the thief for two, and then take out higher gun for three. Yeah. Or something like that. I was because I'm already getting a plus one from hoists. Yeah. Right. Or wait. No, the hoist doesn't give you a plus one. It applies a minus one to the. Oh right, to the yeah, yeah to whoever I hit. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, Tempest is going to be doing one uh, to everything. Uh, Ra could do a flame spike probably because you could do a summon staff, then you have a staff, then flame spike. So you could spread it a bunch of damage from Ra, and Legacy doesn't really. Legacy could help someone else do more damage, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if that hit me, if you hoist chain the operative once, then we can just have the operative target Legacy, and he takes no damage because uh, oh no, because of the contract giving a plus one. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what are you thinking? Um, double click on uh, crowbar again. Dual crowbar. I don't read that. Whenever Mr. Fixture deals damage, he will deal a damage to so one other target and increase damage by one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not used to being able to not dr to not being the one driving. So <laughs> it's like I want to read that card. Wait, I want to read that card. Um. What's uh, what's the the one next to my style there? That's a plus. Oh, that's a pipe yeah. wrench. Okay. No, I don't want to do that. Um. Oh, 
Well, okay, so if I charge the operative and then overdrive, or, or not dr- overdrive, strike. strike the operative, she won't... that'll kill the damage she does from killing other cards, right? Yes. All right, let's do that. Okay. And then that way we can start working at, at the other ones with impunity. Yeah, I'm a fan of that because her damage that she deals in response just adds up really fast. Yeah, it's annoying, especially when you've got this many. And you're doing play. plus one damage to her, right? So it's actually. Yeah, exactly. And bloody knuckles, dangerous card. Curse Runway wants us to open up pipe wrench. <laughs> I don't. It might be too late now to. No, we can open up pipe wrench. Yeah. What is? What was he wanted to see? Increase damage dealt by Mr. Fixer by one. Reduce damage dealt to Mr. Fixer by one. And as like with any other tool, you put it in and it removes. So he just was he did just want to see the artwork maybe, maybe the something? tattoo face. I don't know. Okay, so um, so I don't need to worry about the next evolution play. Um, so I could yep. go with takedown and prevent um, prevent villain cards from being played. Yeah, which might be nice to sort of pause what they're doing. Uh, it's still, this underboss can still come out, but at least it keeps them from playing a regular card, so. Uh, I think I'm gonna go, I mean, it'd be nice to save that for when an informant comes out, but I don't really have anything else I wanna play, so. Yeah. I'm gonna play that. Uh, and then I'm gonna use this. And let's see, so. I think I want to have Tempest use his power so that I can hit everything for one. Because there's a lot of guys. <laughs> yep. And he's going to get the damage bonus against the chairman, unfortunately. So we'll just go through hitting everyone. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yep. Chairman gets angry about that. All right, summon staff. Uh, yep. You get a summon staff. Wonderful. Summon staff. <laughs> you get the staff of Ra and another staff of Ra. <laughs> Actually, you don't get another staff of Ra because you've got them all. I've got them all. I've got the staves. I feel like it's flame spike time because you have all the staves in your hand. Yes, I concur. All right, so you've got a one damage. Um, let's see. It's going to be boosted though, right? Isn't it boosted one? It's boosted by one. Yeah, so you could kill yeah. the hired gun. Uh, or, I mean, we could work on taking out these guys. Yeah, so like hired gun. Yeah, like let's see. I want to, like, like what I want to figure out is how to get as many of these down to one as possible. Oh, right. Good call. So that you can take them all so out with Tempest. Two. And then you've got a three from this, and then you've got a four from this. So you've got a two, a three, and a four. Um, all right, so, so could we do, could do... I would suggest maybe two and three to the contract, and then a four to the fence. Yep, yep, that's exactly what I was going to say. Okay. Perfect. I think I might have been able to... Was, I was going to maybe say enforcers, but yeah, either yeah, one. The thing is, the enforcers are not a big deal. Right. Uh, so... As long as you have a card to discard. Yep, do it. Okay. All right. And then we'll do this to uh, the contract. Yeah, him doing a extra damage to hero targets is just brutal. Uh, and then the fence. Throw that staff. Wait. Did I click wrong? Um, oh, you're, you a hero card got destroyed, so the fence healed them. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. So, but not, he didn't heal himself. No, he though. heals whenever a hero card is destroyed, both the chairman and right. the operative. So you, you destroyed the staff of Ra, and so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. All right, I'm going to put an electrical storm for next turn. 
Yep. That should, uh, so that's Tempest gonna be dealing two damage each turn all the time. So I'm gonna hit the operative first. And she's tied with the chairman, so we'll say yes, she's the highest. And then we want to, I don't think it, the order matters here because yeah, they don't react. They don't react to, to them being destroyed. It's just uh, the chairman or the operative. So go ahead and choose for me. It would be nice to have that plus one from Legacy all the time with Tempest, but mm -hmm. maybe we'll get a... Uh... Oh, and right, the, I'm like, what's this going on? The operative is trying to hit the operative is trying to hit back, but can't because of place change. Yeah. Cursed Ronway says hit contract first. Why is that, Ronway? All right, so we got a bunch of them out. Uh, we have the VAT. So the VAT is going to deal us damage whenever we play a card, which sucks. Uh, but it's also going to deal each target, so it's actually going to take out this hard gun for us. All oh, right, we yeah we had to hit the contract first because of the plus one damage, mm -hmm. uh, but it happened anyways. Uh, okay, we'll just let these guys get down to one. So this bat does three types of damage, so you get three separate uh, yeah. animations. <clears throat> And that's why this, and as, as interesting as this card is, it can be a real, like, murder card if you have boosters. Yeah. Because, you know, a card that deals three, three damage but has a plus one damage on it deals four. This card deals six. So it or can be... Or if there's be... plus two, it just... Yeah. yeah. But Legacy's okay. Yeah. He's got minus one. Everyone else is going to take one, one, and one. Except the chairman, of course. So we'll just click right through these as fast as we can. You can go pretty fast. Yep. All right, so now the muscle is going to hit us, uh, and there's nothing we can do about that. So we all take two, except for Legacy. And they don't play a card, but they do put into play an underboss. And here comes mm -hmm. the informant. And luckily, the villain can't play cards. Uh, so there you go. I think, actually, that might be the last... Oh, there's still one more underboss. So we had a 50-50 chance of it being the Broker. So the Broker uh, plays the top card of the villain deck at the start of the villain turn, uh, but also plays Informants, uh, which are terrible, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, raw discard a card or take four melee damage. What's my current hit point? 15. I would suggest discarding something. Yeah, get rid of one of the staves. Uh, we have, uh, Mr. Fixer can help you get it back. So the, the informant, uh, anytime a villain card is, a hero card is played, play the top card of the villain deck, but she can't right now because of takedown. So Mr. Fixer will be safe. Uh, another staff? Yeah. All right. So the hoist chains wear off and now you get a card play. What, uh, go, what, uh, scroll to the over. What's that last tool? Tire iron. Uh, what is that? It's that insta-kill. All damage is protecting yeah. If that target has two or fewer hit points, it insta-kills. Oh, right. So you, you're doing one damage, so you could, like, hit the muscle, and it would kill it, for example. Yeah. Hmm. I think, like, continuing to hit the operative with hoist chain is preferable for me but I'll, but actually having you kill the informant would be nice so that because that's gonna come in to play on um, legacy's turn um, so like like, like takedown is gonna expire on legacy's turn it's gonna get destroyed so right. we want to kill the informant now so you, we need to do and the informant is only two yeah, it's two so you can, as long as you have a plus one damage uh, of some form, you can do it. So you could. And I don't. Everything else I have is tools, right? Oh, you Pretty can much. pick up this style. 
Well, yeah, that's. I'm looking. It's it's a little pixelated. I'm having a hard time okay, reading yeah, that. Yeah, so Grease Monkey Fist gives also. you a plus one damage and choose the type. Yeah, let's do that. I, I wanted to get that out, so if I don't have anything else I can play as a good one shot, that'll be, I think, worth getting out. Okay, so now there's two things in play that care about cards being played. So we can let the informant go first uh, and take down, prevents that from happening. And then the bat hits you for one. So we're going to hit the informant. What damage type would you like? Infernal. One infernal, two infernal damage. Goodbye, informant. And now the infernal operative informant. punches legacy. Ouch. Riveting crane might come in handy when the crooked cops come out, which will be soon. Because there's only they're the only ones left. Uh, okay. So legacy. Actually, I'm thinking of a back fist strike. It might not be a bad idea. Uh, we get the broker down to one. I mean, mm -hmm. we just need to get things down to two, right? Uh, for Tempest to be able to take them out. Uh, but we get them down to one with a back fist strike. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. Or do you want to get the enforcers down to two? And then I didn't have Ra is, get the broker is down. Is there enough for Ra to get the broker down? Yeah, I mean Ra can just do his like he can do three damage if you put out your staff. Yeah. So Alright, I'll hit yeah, and then and actually what I'll do is I'll get Legacy to make Tempest use his power so that uh, everything's gonna be killed. So let's hit enforcers. And then there'll be no villain cards left. And we'll all be happy and punched by the operative, but so it is. Uh, okay, and then the chairman is going to come out. All oh, right, and uh, Hydro mentions the VAT will hit everything as well. Mm -hmm. um, which is annoying. So actually, the VAT's going to hit these all for three. So we could actually, why don't I just focus on the operative? I think that's better. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the operative. Sure. Because the sooner we can get her down, the sooner we can win. Um. So maybe, actually, do you want to punch the operative to reduce the feedback damage she's going to be doing? Ooh, yeah, good call. That's been working out well for us so far. Yeah. So, Mr. Fixer. the operative for what type of damage uh let's do lightning this time lightning damage three damage this time oh sweet inspiring presence yes that's gonna be played next turn staff of raw yep staff it up that'll give me a nice little boost of hp to counteract the yeah, so if we want to try cycling broker, bat or whatever, actually, the heck it between is. Tempest and the Vat, uh, the broker will be dead. So I would suggest just hitting the operative. Personally, but yeah, how much am I do? I get to do what three uh, or four? It'll be it'll be three unless you want to throw the staff. Yeah, do the three. Base power. To the operative. Yep. Okay. Hopefully a, he uh, a healing vat won't come out, but if it does, that reduces the amount of damage these guys do to us anyway, so. All right, so we'll get the enforcers. Lightning damage to everyone. We'll give it to, oh yeah, so if we, if we aim it at legacy, then it's, yeah. it's zero, so. <clears throat> yeah, I may as well just choose for me here. So far, so good. Okay. What do I want to play? A vicious cyclone on the chairman isn't a bad idea, but I never play this card. It reduces damage dealt to me by one. A 
of that type. So I could yeah. like use it to try to protect against this cold bat. And then it would make me deal cold damage. I'm not sure if that's really worth it. I might rather just have three cards. Yeah, because then maybe you can get... Um... Cards I want to play. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, what's the, what's the card that lets him uh, destroy ongoings? Or just, I, well, I can destroy environment cards. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> right. So, actually, I'm going to go with that, and then I can do a Vicious Cyclone. Actually, the thing is, if I have cards I don't want, I should put this on the chairman now, because he's going to flip, right? There's enough underbosses in the trash, I think. Uh, there's two, and the muscle and the broker should get in there, so we should flip. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and Vicious Cyclone on the chairman, so that on my turn, because I have like three cards I'm happy to discard, so. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to have Dean Band Shackles on him. It's going to be worth it. This is all hoping that the, the VAT... The healing vat doesn't come out because that will prevent these guys from getting killed, but we will see. Rats could come out and eat them also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and into the star sphere. That's good. Oh, and it's that card! Oh no. Alright, so Exactly the card we didn't need. Yeah, so all of these guys are going to take zero damage. I mean, we're going to take zero damage too, so there's that. And this is all going to be one minus one. So another informant's going to come out, which is annoying. But this is reducing all damage by one. And then everyone heals one, which is better for them than us right now. Yep. We'll take care of them on the next turn. Everyone takes damage. Except Legacy, because he's fortitudinal. And they're healing. Fine. That's fine. And then she's punching. Legacy. That's fine. That's fine. Yep, one and one. And here's the deputy. This is the problem. This guy... Yeah, just mean that... Uh... Yeah, so the, the Crooked Cop's going to come out, and... The... This is where the game takes a turn. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It was that vat! Uh, yeah. Right, so actually, now we have a tie for the lowest, so Rob probably doesn't want to discard a card, but Mr. Fixer would probably be happy to discard a card. He got yeah, get rid of one of those dual crowbars. Me too. Okay. Yeah. We've got a Crooked Cop. So yeah, he reduces damage dealt to the operative and underbosses. We'll get, let Mr. Fixer discard another card. Yeah, I got plenty. Let's get rid of... Um, what's the, what, did I pull another style? Which one is that? Uh, Riveting Crane. This one's actually really good. It lets it makes tar damage irreducible to, to a target until the start of your next turn. But you have to actually get through all the damage reduction that's out there right now, which is going to be difficult. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, get rid of the other dual crowbar because I don't think I'm going to use that. So. Okay. All right. What would you like to play? Um. All right. What's what's chilling in everybody's trash right now? Is it worth the to pull out that salvage yard? I don't think it's worth the salvage yard yet because you still got you've got staves in there. Actually, and yeah, it's not like there's nothing in Tempest trash. Okay. I would hold on to that. I would hold on to that until you have an overdrive in the trash, to be honest. It's like if you get a free okay. play of overdrive. Um, Bloody Knuckles might not be a bad idea. It's dangerous, but uh, unless we have a way to destroy it. I don't know if we do. Yeah, that's like, I love Bloody Knuckles when you're playing Dark Watch Fixer. Yeah. Because then you well, or if put you it have out. another character who can destroy the ongoing for you, like Absolute Zero. To a benefit. Yeah. Um, hmm. So you're going to be doing right now two damage with your plus one, but then there's a minus one from this vat. Um, and depending on what I'm hitting, there's a minus one from the Crooked Cop, too. Yeah. I would probably suggest hitting the Informant. But the thing is, even you're, like, that's, you're just going to do one damage to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not until Inspiring Presence comes out. Uh, 
And actually, the thing is, with Inspiring, I'll, if I play Inspiring Presence, it'll be plus one damage. And, yeah. Why don't I, you know what? Skip, skip, and hopefully I'll get an overdrive. Right? Yeah. And then I can just use it for next turn. I'm just saying, like, if all I can do is one damage to one thing this turn. I mean, you could put a pipe wrench and get plus one damage, or tire iron to let you sort of insta kill things. Oh, that's right. I forgot I had that tire iron. Like, you could insta kill the muscle even though you can't do damage to it. So you might want to probably actually insta kill the informant. Um, and that would. So that I would lose the hoist chain. Yeah, you know what? Do that. It's tire iron or pipe wrench? Yeah, tire iron and uh, then uh, strike the informant. Okay, so you're going to hit You're gonna hit for one minus one. Oh, and he plays the top two cards. <laughs> okay, so these guys oh. are dying anyways. Oh, look at that. We have a chemical explosion. All right. Things are turning out for us after all in a horrible way. Okay, well, let's hit the operative. Oh, wait, no, we want to kill the Crooked Cops first. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are doing a damage reduction. All right, she's going to try to hit. Yeah, there's no... He's going to take... We're going to start taking a little bit of damage now. Uh, these are all going to get hit. There's nothing we can do, so... Um, actually, we can try to order it so that Legacy keeps taking the damage. That's what I'm going to do. So, we'll let the muscle go in. Because at least he gets minus one, right? And we'll try to save. Uh, so now I'm going to give him a five damage to Fixer and Raw, so that they're not the highest for the operative. Mm -hmm. And we'll go ahead and hit the operative. Uh, and now we can hit the Broker. Kekmicles. Yeah, Kekmical Explosion. All right, Tempest is going to take his five. And we'll kill the informant. Tempest is going to take it like a man or a, or a oh, woman man. or a, a fish tentacle creature. This is a pretty brutal turn now. All right, and then let's let that go through. And a lab rat. The lab rat at least isn't going to go off right now. Okay, you still get to use your power. Now the thing you're going to hit is gone. You could hit the uh, deputy and kill him. I guess he's yeah. He might just get killed already. Maybe not. He might just get incidentally killed with all the things we're doing. Actually, yeah, Tempest is just going to incidentally kill him. So why don't you hit the operative? Okay, fair enough. Well, how is he just going to get incidentally killed? So. Uh, Legacy is going to put out Inspiring Presence, so there's plus one damage, right. and then Tempest is going to do one at the start of his turn and one for his power. So, so that's a total two of four, yeah. Okay. Yeah, do it, Operative. Okay. Let's get her out of there if we can. Yeah, and Tempest is going to kill the rat, too. Right, so you get to choose which changes damage type first. Uh, we'll do that, and let's do psychic damage. I chose for you. Good sign. All right, inspiring presence. I feel inspired. I like hit points yeah, so that's a little bit. Be a nice little bit of HP back. All right, so actually now, uh, I can have a hero use a power. So we could have. I think it probably makes sense since Tempest is going to be doing enough damage to kill all the other things already. We could have Ra do more damage to the operative. Um, I think he's going to do. He's going to do three. Um, or I guess, uh, actually, why don't we use Ra to throw the staff so that he can summon a new one? Yep. Does that make sense? Great. <clears throat> okay, so Ra. You want to throw your staff? Throw it. At the operative. We might take down the operative before the chairman flips. That's unusual. <laughs> Five damage. Actually, if Ra can do, you could use Fire Blast and we'll kill the. Yeah. Uh, we won't quite kill the operative. 
Yeah, because that would just be five, not six, because you don't have a staff anymore. But I, it's six because of Inspiring Presence, right? Oh, yeah, right? it's six because of Inspiring Presence. Well, do, yeah, do we do that? Yeah, do it. Okay. Then you can summon staff next turn. Yep. Hilarious. Yeah, we actually, I as the many times I played this, I never saw this scenario in testing. Hopefully it works. Oh, and, oh, and you also yeah. still get to do two damage. Ha ha ha! Uh, it's not really going to matter because all these guys are going to be... Unless I want to get rid of that lab rat. And Tempest is going to kill lab rat too. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Pick it. And then you mean to fire damage ability. All right, so here this is going to hit everyone. So I'll just do choose for me. We get the operative. is going to flip over here in a second. She's gone. Out of the game. Well, she's still there. She still has an effect, which we'll see in a second. Oh, I guess we could have summoned staff first just to get the card. We didn't even think about that. Oh, but someone mentioned there is no... Oh, that's right, because you can play a card when you summon staff. Yeah. Oh, well. Sure. Uh, so the operative is now incapacitated, uh, which increases damage dealt by the chairman by one. So we'll have to watch out for that. Unfortunately, uh, still can't... I don't want to discard anything because he's immune to damage, so I'm just going to stop. Okay, so... Well, what do we want to do? Um, I could draw more cards to have more cards to uh, be hitting the chairman with, which is not a bad idea. I could also try to... If I get out the elemental subwave, I can pr try to reduce the damage he's going to be dealing to Tempest. Uh, so melee is probably a good choice here. Yeah, I rarely use Elemental Subwave, but I'm going to use it uh, to reduce the damage uh, from the Chairman. Because X on that card is going to be uh, 2, so he's going to deal 2 damage back every time. And Temp yeah. well, not every time, the first time each turn, so I'm going to try to protect Tempest a little bit. So we'll put it the Subwave. And hopefully the thing that changes all damage to Toxic doesn't come out, but actually if that comes out, that's okay. And now I'm going to hit everything. Actually, well, oh, my, my other thing. Oh, that mutagen is protecting the lab rat. Oh, no. So the lab rat is going to be coming after us. Did someone in the chat mention that? Probably not. You guys, you got to help us out here. <laughs> they may have. I'm trying to keep up with playing and reading and also being thrown out of my mind because of my painkillers. And that one is winning. <laughs> Let the rat kill the deputy. Well, it's too late for that. Let the rat shoot the sheriff. There's two but rats they now. Did not shoot the the rats deputy. Are eat us. Such is such is life being eaten by rats. Now 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 Tempest is the lowest. Things turned around on us. All right, the operative is finally revealed. Good. That's a perfect card for him to play. A card that does nothing. Yep. All right, it is time. I wish you had the hoist chain still. Oh, you have another one. <laughs> I would highly recommend hoist chaining him so that uh, he does less damage in reaction to us. Yep, that's on me. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, strike him. Uh, Infernal. Four damage with the Nemesis bonus. Now he's going to punch back. It's going to be minus oh, one plus right. one. The chat points out that the tools come back to hand instead of... Uh, instead of being back. discarded. Right, right, yeah. So he's still doing significant damage because he's got plus one from that. But uh, actually, what I'm going to do, now that Legacy is down towards the lowest... I'm going to give him Danger Sense so the rats don't do anything to him. Unless, oh. unless please do... Yeah, because I want to use that ability to uh, to let someone to let someone do damage to the chairman. Well, the problem is the chairman's going to punch someone who does that. I could also do Next Evolution to be immune to all melee damage. Thoughts? Um... Yeah, I mean, I, 
I, I'm tough with Legacy. If Legacy's not doing what he, what I'm used to Legacy doing, I'm a little bit at sea because I, you know me, I like to be right. like a damage dealing powerhouse, and he tends to be much more of a support. Yeah. Um, character. Yeah. The thing so. is, if I let someone else do damage, they're gonna get hit by the chairman. Uh, I want to keep Legacy low. Uh, the thing is, if I let, like, say, if I let Mister Fixer hit the chairman, then Mister Fixer is gonna be lower than Legacy. <laughs> Uh, that's a problem. Actually, he will be, he'll be tied with Legacy, because if you hoist chain him again, actually, if you're going to do that. Well, Pydrology does bring up a very good point, which is that if you become immune to melee, oh, yes. <laughs> all damage will become it'll toxic. all become toxic. All right. Simply. Mr. Fixer, uh, I request that you hoist chain the chairman. Actually, yeah, you gain a point. You're not going to be the lowest. You'll be safe. Okay. from the rats. Damage type? Uh, we haven't done Sonic in this game, I don't think. All right, so yeah, you are going to get hit back from the chairman, but he's going to be at minus two now because of the hoist, the double hoist chain. So, I yep. mean, Nemesis damage is good too, so. Good the other way, anyway. So yeah, four, but then minus one, minus one. And another next evolution. All right. So we're going to summon staff. There's no reason not to. Yep. There were no copies, but you still get to draw another card. And flame spike. So, oh, right. You don't even get a staff because they're all in your trash. They're all in the trash, yep. Uh, though Mr. Fixer right, so... can help you get them back. Blazing Tornado. Yeah, I mean, he actually has two salvage yards now. Yeah. Um, all right, so tell me, okay, again, yeah, so Blazing Tornado is three, is a power for three, and then what is the other this one? This is one damage, additional power, so not super great this turn. Uh, then immune to fire damage. Not super useful right now either. Yeah. Maybe good, yeah, good, I guess, good to get yeah. Blazing Tornado out. Yep. Um, and to say. you're probably going to want to use it. And so the question is, do you want to hit the chairman for four or a rat for two? If you hit the chairman, he's going to punch you back for only one damage now with the double voice chain. So I would go for that. If you're and I'm currently at what? Uh, Raw. 14. 14. Yep, do that. Okay. Yeah, Tempest is going to do a ton of uh, damage mm -hmm. on his turn. So we actually might get the chairman low enough that the rats will eat him. That's my goal. That's my goal now. Eaten by the rats. Oh, in but his he own. ignores the environment. But if he and Tempest are, or no, Tempest is going to be lower than. Should I get Tempest to use a power so that? Uh... But then he would have been hit by the chairman. I'm overthinking it. All right. <laughs> All right. I can't hit the rats, but I can hit the chairman. So the chairman's going to get hit first. He's going to react, but he only reacts the first time on each turn. So, yeah, the, the rats are going to eat Tempest, and they're going to try to eat the chairman probably. Uh, but they can't because he's immune to environment damage, just like Legacy is now. All right, and the rats are experimented on. All right, so I have, right, so now I can trash cards. I have one of these already. I can get rid of this, I can get rid of this. And shielding wins, nothing's doing that much damage, I think. And I want to keep into the Star Spear for something, if something horrible happens. Yep. And then I can just play correspondence to get more. So I'm gonna do four damage again and again and again. So that's uh, 16 so far. That's pretty awesome. And then uh, there's gonna be another four. So 20 damage. Those gene bound shackles are awesome. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna choose melee damage because that's what he's hitting me with. And actually that will pr help protect him from the rats. I almost never use this card. It's coming in really handy here. So he would be dead if they played Flame Spike. It says Thunder Show fifty five. Into the Stratosphere would let me do more damage to him, even though I don't get the nice effect of it. What do you think? I mean, Tempest might be dead. He might not get another turn. Yeah, go for Actually, it. This, we might win here because yeah, five damage and then four damage. We're gonna win before the rats even get a chance to not hit him. 
Take that, Graham. Tempest is, well, well, Tempest well, is the MVP well, well. here. <laughs> so yeah, Tempest was a monster. Honorable mention to Mr. Fixer for making it possible with all the hoist chains and everything. Look at that. And there it is. Not And no incapacitations. Sweet. You, yeah, we tend to either, like, win big or lose big. <laughs> like, I don't know that we've ever, on the on the stream, have we ever had a, a mixed victory with a couple incapacitations and a couple non? Oh, yeah, we had that epic game against Voss, remember? Oh, right, Where, right, uh, right. Everyone was incapacitated except Absolute Zero. And he was, oh, like, yeah, that doing, was a good one. Like, going up to full hit points and then, like, and then hitting himself down, down to again. one and then going back up to full, like, in the same turn. Yeah. So yeah, well done. Well done, heroes. The chairman has been revealed and slightly scratched, as you can see. <laughs> uh, he's a pretty tough character. He is angry. Uh, I mean, wouldn't you be beaten in your own factory? I, yeah, exactly. I would be angry. But you know, he can't be down forever. Uh, he's coming back in the Battle for Broken City. So. A truly exemplary victory. Oh, yes. Let's see what you did nice. there. Chairman lost because he doesn't have a hat. Does everyone else have a hat in, in our game? Yeah, everyone except Tempest. Oh. It's been an ongoing thread <laughs> about hats. It's hats all the way down. I think we should go. Uh, I'm going to share this. Uh, there's a way to get to that. And I don't. I don't know how. Shift tab. I don't know how. It says it every time I start the game. Mm -hmm. the chairman I never used it in any game until we started doing these streams. Slightly scratched on the live stream. That's probably going to want me to sign into Facebook and stuff. Nah. Did you mark it as a possible spoiler? I did. Nice. Possible. Possibly spoilerific. Indeed. I should go watch the live stream on Twitch. It's probably a bad idea. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Phantom Fanatic would like to ask a favor. I don't know if he's asking it of us. Inception. Oh no. Help. There's an ad. There's a playing ad. <laughs> yeah. an ad. It's all ads. It's an ad within an ad. I think Can you show the music for Playgrad Fan of the Fanatic. Music for the chairman, since he didn't get to win. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, let's bring him up here. In order to understand recursion, you must first understand recursion. Yeah, it's a huge spoiler. He actually is. Especially because in the multiverse, all you can see is his eyes. His shadow. It's a detective letter. I don't think that letter, uh, that detective ends up getting put behind the desk in the story. It is very, very cool. Are you listening to it on your computer too? Uh, yeah, I, I just <laughs> I have it running, so I'm just switching around as you switch around. So someone actually yeah requested to hear um, Playgrat. Playgrat. Right. We will show you Playgrat. Alias I think Plague Rat's music is the least musical, uh, musical of the musics. That's at this point. accurate. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, and for those of you who are requesting music, um, I should just let you know that you will be able to, the, the music from this expansion will be released as a soundtrack at some point, but not until, um, unfortunately, not until after Infernal. Uh, Infernal Relics also comes out. So it's going to be the soundtrack, Volume 2, is going to be Rook City and Infernal Relics. Playgrat is crouching at... Is it a at... hat or is it a mask? I feel like it's more of a mask than a hat. Playgrad is coaching at under five inches. That is definitely a typo. <laughs> <laughs> he is not that small. Of a, I mean, a real rat, yes, would be crazy. Yeah. Uh, I will fix that. Whoops. <laughs> uh, copy and paste it from the website, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Some of these. Uh, we get brand new ones, obviously, for... Uh, for the promos, like Greatest Legacy has a bio that you can now read on the website as well. So check that out. If you Ambuscade and Silver Gulch will also be included in Volume 2 of the soundtrack. That's correct. So it's quarter after. Do we want to do another game? Like a speed run? Um, How are you feeling? I, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I can... Yeah, you have to manage to let him beat you. Play him on advanced and play like poorly. <laughs> you want me to do that? You can just watch. Okay. Yeah, and I'll throw in my two cents. All right. I'm I gonna play. I guess I'm gonna play. So Ambuscade is like a shooty guy. I'm gonna play shooty guys against the shooty guy. That sound good? Sure. And shooty girl. And, also. And environment. It's a good environment. Silver Gulch. Shooty. Okay. Shooty, shooty, shooty. Shooty, shooty, shooty. Guns, guns, guns. Uh, I guess the race is sort of shooty, but Rob is more shooty. All right. He shoots fire. He totally shoots. I'm skipping that part. I'm going through. I'm none lefting it. Oh my god. Cloaking device. This isn't going to be a speed run. For speed run, you have to make sure that doesn't happen. Shoot things with shotguns. Bam, bam, bam. So yeah, shotgun is her large damage single target. Trying to get... So for those who are trying to follow along, I'm going to try and... It's going to be hard because most of the cards are kind of pixelated, so I can't really read them. But John's first thing that he's trying to do is get rid of that cloaking device, which is going to get Ambuscade to flip back over. Uh, do not like. Do not like. Alright, here we go. Environment. Good. <laughs> yeah, this is you always want the environment to kill those uh sonic mines because then it expired they and started expire to right away. Yeah. There. There he comes. Oh great, now he shoots me a whole bunch. Right, wait, so who's asking about the Ennead? Uh, the Ennead comes in Infernal Relic, so that is where actually we are working on... Uh, so, okay, so here, while, while John is playing this, I'll give you some, some behind the scenes. So, uh, Rook City is done. Submitted, waiting to be released on the 14th, one week from today, at 9 a.m. Pacific time-ish. Um, in the time since we were putting some of the finishing touches on there, uh, Jennifer... Uh, has begun work on the environments, the 3D environments for Infernal Relics, which of course are Tomb of Anubis, as well as um, uh, Realm of Discord. And so she's been working on those, she's been getting the deck lists put together. The cool thing is that, and we've mentioned this before, that the, um, the engine that we built is pretty robust at this point. So getting new decks put together and into the engine is actually pretty quick, at least in the in initial... Um, implementation point of view. And so 
you know, at least two or three of the decks are pretty much in there now. Now, that being said, each expansion so far has come up with one or two sort of interesting new mechanics that need to be added to the engine that are not supported outright. Uh, with, with Rook City, one of the most important ones was things like infection cards. Um, another one was uh, Expatriate's card that lets her use as many powers as she has guns in play, so that we hadn't yet had anything that could do variable numbers of powers. Um, and then one of the other big ones was the idea of having more than one character card out, and that's what you saw in the most recent game we just played with the chairman and his operative. Now, one of the reasons why that was important was because implementing that, we had to make sure when we did it that it could not only just support an additional single character card, but also an arbitrary number of character cards, which is what's going to be happening with the Ennead. Because the Ennead has, I think, what is it, eight character cards, maybe? Uh... I think it's eight. Nine. But I don't, is it nine? Okay, so, so yeah, so there can be nine. Now, how that's going to be done on an artwork perspective is actually still an open question. We're going to be meeting with um, Rare Than Games uh, probably next week or the week after to discuss uh, what that's going to look like, um, which could be pretty neat. Uh, and, yes, as as uh, Pricey Province has mentioned, is that uh, Arjun Adept and Night Mist both have some really interesting mechanics happening on their cards. Um, obviously, Argent Adept has sort of non-power powers in the songs and 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 uh, accompaniments thing, but then um, Night Mist also has the cards that have the the magic numbers on them. So, uh, so those are additional mechanics that need to be implemented uh, into the engine. Uh, yes, what we're saying is that Infernal Relics uh, is confirmed to be released by April twenty fourth. That's what we're saying. That's that's exactly what we're saying. What are you saying? <laughs> Actually, thing. what we're saying is that we are not going to say a month because this is why we can't have nice things. People think as soon as we mention a month that that is us confirming a release date. So, um, so yes, you can expect Infernal Relics sometime in 2015. Confirmed. You heard it here first. Um... Yeah, so that's uh, so that's sort of where we're at on that. Um, and actually, while Jennifer and Jean-Marc, of course, who's going to be working on music as well as the engine, while they're working on more expansion content for Infernal Relics, that's when John is now hard at work on multiplayer for uh, the internet, the interwebs, as it were. I've not even been paying attention. How's the game going, John? Not bad. I am annoyed by... Uh... The minus one damage, that's really annoying. It's an annoying thing. Uh, and by Ra not having anything good to play. But I'm just, I'm only shooting Ambuscade. <laughs> I cannot confirm that. Ax Kidson, unfortunately. I'd have to look up exactly what's yeah, happening. Uh, we the variants are not, we haven't announced anything and that's not confirmable yet. Yeah. We actually, we do have a pretty extensive internal schedule, but not all of that. Like, basically, until something is either, until you see it on the stream, or we post about it, or it's actually released, um, so I wouldn't consider anything uh, to be confirmed to be in. Uh, because as some people have right, rightly observed, when it comes to <clears throat> the variants, the way they release them on the tabletop is already very different than the way that we're releasing them in the game. You know, variants or promos, as they were called on the tabletop, were not really much of a thing early on. You know, uh, in Rook City, in the original game, they basically just had Young Legacy, and then Rook City, they just had Rook City Wraith, and that was it. Um, it wasn't until Infernal Relics that they started to have, like, um, what was it, like, uh, Redeemer Fanatic, and uh, Force of Two Horizons, and, you know, some additional, you know, more. And then it wasn't until later than that that they started having the teams, you know, the Dark Watch, the Prime Wardens, um, the Freedom Six. <clears throat> and so we've been sort of mixing and matching a little bit um, just so that we can make sure that we're getting interesting promos out and also having interesting challenges for people to be able to unlock while they're playing. Um, so yeah, so unfortunately that is not confirmed yet, but uh, obviously stay tuned because we're moving along at quite a clip. Um, and so, you know, we promise you will never have to go too, too long without some interesting new content coming down the pipe. So. Uh, 
Um, in terms of the total number of var variants per expansion, it, we're going to try and keep it consistent. Um, as I said, like this one now was lower. That you know, the initial game came with um, six. Well, it didn't come with six. The six came out um, about a month after we released the base game, but um, it was six altogether in the base game. This is going to have three Rook City. Um, I think Infernal Relics is going to have four, four to five, I think. Um, so yeah, it's not necessarily going to be super consistent, but we are going to try and have um, at least something with every major expansion. That's what we'd really like. Right, this guy's going to kill me now. Dang, Tyler Hayes! <laughs> Is there going to be a new app promo, a second-hand Elabra promo? I'm not sure I understand that question. It could be because I'm on pain I think they're asking, is there going to be anything like Super Scientific Tachyon again? Oh, um, I can definitely confirm that that's a maybe. <laughs> definitely maybe. <laughs> that's definitely maybe. Uh, yeah, it's possible, but it's not exactly planned. So, Ambuscade killed me because I ignored his thing that was killing me. So, that happens. Whoops. Sometimes it's not the right thing to just shoot the villain, even though that's what you want. I should have picked Haka. If I'm gonna do that. Uh, Estelenda says, the first time I've seen anyone lose to Ambuscade. Actually, the first time I ever played Ambuscade, he just cloaked every turn and we could never hit him and he killed us brutally and we're like this villain is the worst <laughs> uh but in most games that doesn't happen uh but it can happen and it can be really bad so but yeah he's not the hardest villain he's a one so i think he's a one two okay he's a two because he can i think he's a two because he can be bad for you sometimes so yeah yeah, we don't have any really super specific. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. We have something that's going to be happening for International Tabletop Day. It's not going to be anything super crazy. We were really trying to push to get um, Rook City released in time for Tabletop Day, uh, but it just wasn't going to happen, unfortunately. Um, but stay tuned. It might be something special. Yeah, so we are going to... There are, you know, there's lots of International Tabletop Day events going on around the world. Uh, so if you're in Halifax... Uh, me and maybe Jean-Marc will be around uh, doing some demos and stuff uh, with the Boardroom Game Cafe. So, uh, yeah. So I'm sure there'll be lots of Sentinels being played all around the world. Um, and you could make it happen as well at your game store. Bring your game of Sentinels and play with people. Get people involved. Indeed. Any other questions going on? There you go. Al, uh, Axe Kitson said, I'll be running games at, of Sentinels all day at Games Lab in Melbourne. Cool, cool. Well, that was a 14 minute or 12 minute, I guess, loss to Ambuscade as a dessert for us. Indeed. Games Lab. Yes, I was going to say, I knew none left had mentioned. Uh... Melbourne. You, should, you guys should do some speed runs of tabletop sentinels. Oh. Like, take, do a video and, and post it up of like playing the card game as fast as possible. Uh, Bunsen asks, did you guys play the card game before you started working on the video game? Do you want to tell the story, the origin story? Sure. So I'll tell the quick story, which I, and we've told, we've told versions of this story many, many times, but um, I'll give you the sort of the short version. Uh, it was August 2011. Handelabra had just released a game. Actually, we hadn't even released a game. We were just beginning to show off a game that we had developed called Uncle Slam, which is a president-on-president -president boxing game for uh, iOS. And we took it to a little old show you guys might have heard of called PAX Prime. Uh, setting up on the day before the show, we were right next door to a small little uh, tabletop startup that had just released their first game a month earlier at Gen Con known as Greater Than Games. And during setup, we uh, they showed us how to play their game. We showed them how to play our game. Uh, John, my illustrious partner, immediately fell in love with the game. I immediately fell in love with the artwork and the story. 
Um, you know, I have, was never much of a huge tabletop gamer before that. And uh, actually, some of this I mentioned in the uh, you can get in our April Fools video. But I was never much of a tabletop gamer. John was was much more than I was, um, and he got it right away. I kind of wanted to get it, uh, but I didn't really get it as much as I could have. But then we played it a few more times over the course of the weekend, and I started to sort of understand the idea. But more than that, I was really captivated by the story and the characters. And so I, uh, you know, John and I basically said, hey, you know, if you guys ever want to, uh, to make this as a video game. We would love to do that. Um, yeah, exactly. I just I said I would really love to make a lot of money on this game, <laughs> uh, and I just saw a dollar sign. Yeah, uh, but John so John bought a copy, took it home, and played it all the time with my um, I copy not of a Young copy. Legacy and a signed exactly. art print of Bunker. Yes, I did not buy a copy because I knew that once I got home, I wouldn't have anyone to play it with uh, because I don't, didn't have a lot of tabletop oriented friends and all my kids are too young to read. Uh, but over the next you know couple of years, because this was 2011, so it was like two to three years that I was kind of like we would check in with these guys every time we saw them at a show and like, hey, you know, how are things going? How are sales of the game? Are people liking it? You know, all this time they're releasing expansion after expansion after expansion. Things are going really well. Um, and then I, you know, really started pushing this idea of, of trying to find more of these really cool sort of somewhat niche but somewhat you know experimental new tabletop experiences and how they could work digitally you know sort of figuring out which ones could really work as as cool digital games um and so you know they finally agreed to let us uh sort of behind the curtain a little bit and we started working on it and and as you know john and jean marc and jennifer would confirm whenever we have a meeting about this like i've never played the arjun adept because I, if the if the cards haven't been implemented in our video game, I haven't really played them yet. Because I've only played Sentinels on the tabletop like four times. I'm trying to remember. Did we play at PAX Prime? I think seem to remember we we saying like we need to actually sit down and play Sentinels because we've never actually played it together. <laughs> I can't remember if that happened. Um, I remember we played Tactics with uh, the Great and Games guys. Yeah, we played Tactics. I don't know that we played it at Prime. You mean you talking about like the Handle Labor team? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think we did. I don't think it ever actually ended up happening. Well, we'll have to make that happen as a show. It seems... Yes. Or I guess we could just play multiplayer when we get that uh, going. So There you go. But, you know, it's nice to play the card game, too. Dentinal of the Dentist first. As the uh, Gap of Dream. Uh, says... <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now that we have a card engine, we could make that. Yes. A skin, a skin version of Sentinels of the Multiverse. Yeah, so uh, another thing uh, that sort of was part of the story uh, was after I got the game and I played it a whole bunch uh, with my friends, I wanted to have something to, you know, keep track of the game a little better. I don't know if, if any sort of Sentinels old timers will recall that, like, there wasn't really any good way to keep track of your hit points. Uh, like, you know, people use dice or like these little tokens on paper and stuff, and it was really fidgety. Uh, and difficult to keep track of the token, the, the little chits that they come with now are, make it a little easier. Uh, but so I wanted to make a, an app for that because I'm a developer, and that's you know, when I, all I have is a hammer, and that's programming. So, uh, so I made an app called it Sentinel Sidekick, and we put it out, and it was just like a little you know 99 cent app, and now it's sort of grown over time to become the official companion app. So. Uh, that was sort of a real important step for us in our business relationship with Greater Than Games uh, as well. So, Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was really that, you know, they... I, I mean, for those of you who know about Christopher and Adam, you know that they... Like, this is their baby. This is their comics universe that they created. And, you know, one of the main things that they were really... One of the reasons why it took so long for us to really come to terms about how we could do this is that, you know, they didn't want just anyone messing around in their in their sandbox really you know we had to sort of show them look we do respect their property we respect the story we want to do do, do a justice um and it was through sentinel sidekick that they saw you know that we were you know we were serious about this we weren't just trying to as as i made fun of in the april fool's video i did not just see dollar signs i really do <laughs> see this as a pretty awesome and well well built and strong sort of property that, you know, obviously they see the same thing. You know, they've expanded it. They've got a second game. Um, you know, they're, you see these characters growing over time and changing, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, a print-and-play version of Sentinels of the Multiverse card game, the video game, the board game. Um, stay tuned on that. It's the best I can say for now. <laughs> I don't know. To make it, yeah. 
yeah. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I can tell you that if you guys watch the video, you know that I actually do have that. Like, that is a thing. I made it. It's in my office. It's a thing. Um, I don't know if it's a game. <laughs> um, it, it, it would be playable... <laughs> If you also had a full version of the Sentinels of the Multiverse card game with it. I think it needs to be a game that you can play without not having text. Yeah, yeah, I, yes, I agree. So, like, oh. just with, like, the card has this icon, so that means something, for example. Yeah, I think maybe I will, uh, like, box it up and just bring it as sort of an oddity that people can see um, at conventions. <laughs> I think that would be worth, worth yeah, doing. Yeah, it's just like a few bits of paper, so... Cool. All right. Well, I think it is about time to wrap this up. Um, so it has been myself, John Arnold, the lead developer, and dot, dot, dot. And I'm Jeremy. I am the president, CEO, and cash grabber <laughs> of Labra Games <laughs> Incorporated. Yeah. So uh, um, thank you for joining yeah, us. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week uh, with a slightly less drugged up or differently drugged up Jeremy. <laughs> Hopefully less drugged up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we'll probably be getting into some more of the advanced Rook City stuff. Um, but uh, if all goes well, you will be able to play Rook City yourself uh, a week from today. So Yeah, I think the best that. case scenario is that is for the stream to be almost empty of people because they're all enjoying playing Rook City on their own. They'll probably yeah, come I would and see if we drop any more nuggets. And I'll leave you with that. <laughs> Have a good night. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. <laughs>